Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessica. A few videos ago, I did a video sharing some tips for first-time cosplayers going to Comic-Con, what to expect, how to prepare for your outfit, and I thought it would be a good idea to do a follow-up on that and share with you some of my tips on how I take my cosplay photos and how I edit them all by myself, all at home. And if you're new to this channel, a warm welcome to you. We generally talk about comic books here, but I'm also a fan of film, TV, and all forms of entertainment, and occasionally I dive into some writing-related subjects. But today, it's all about cosplay, so we're gonna get straight into the video. So I'll be breaking the video down into two parts, how I take the photos and how I edit them. It'll be super simple, straightforward, especially for those of you who might be a bit newer to cosplaying and cosplay photography. I'll be pulling up some examples of when I did my cosplay this summer in May Comic Con in London. I cosplayed as Zatanna, as I always do. She's my favorite character. She's a DC superhero, magician, witch. She's very cool, essentially. Now, the first thing to keep in mind when you're doing photos at an event like Comic-Con is that I would always advise you to take your photos outside the convention center just because you will get so much better quality that way with the natural light. And once you're indoor, even if the lights seem bright in the building and even if you think you have a good quality camera, even if you're using the flash, there's just too much going on, I found from the past, to really take good character shots. I would really recommend finding a spot for yourself outdoors. It's still quite busy, especially in the convention center that I usually go to, but you can usually find a little corner to yourself to spend a couple minutes taking a few photos. And what I usually like to do is I try to match the vibe of the background with the character that I'm currently cosplaying because I think that really will help your photos pop a lot more and it'll help enhance like the mood, the atmosphere, and the tone. I'll give you an example with my Zatanna photos here. So as I said, she's a character from DC Comics. She has a classical magician outfit in most of her comics, and that's what people mostly know her as. But I wanted to cosplay a different version of her, which was the version of her in Justice League Dark. It's basically a more cult version of the Justice League, and they're a little bit more grungy, more gothy in vibe. If you look at some of her photos here from her comic panels, you can tell that her style is very much goth inspired, and there's a little bit more of a rougher edge to her character here. And that's why I chose this gray concrete background to do most of her photos in, just because it had a very hard industrial look to it. In terms of actually taking the photos themselves, I had my sister be my assistant photographer for the day. She is a wonderful photographer and I trust her to take most of my photos, so it's best if you do have someone you trust. I know you can get professional photos done, but I find it more of a fun experience when it is with someone that I know and it feels a bit more low-key, low stakes, especially when it comes to thinking of poses. And this is the next thing that I wanted to talk about because, again, it's not about the quality of your camera necessarily, it's about how you can convey your character through the photos. So what I wanted to make sure in these photos of Zatanna that I was taking is that I was conveying her strength, I was conveying her anger. She's very angry in the comics that she features in, this version of her at least. She's a little bit tired of the world. I put here in my caption that this version of her looks like she would fist fight you in the apocalypse, and I absolutely believe she would. Like, she can do magic, but I feel like Zatanna in Justice League Dark, she is just so done and so tired with everything going wrong, the world collapsing, that she just needs to like throw a good punch or like do a really solid roundhouse kick. <laughs> okay, so so far I've been talking about photos that are mostly posed. So camera straight in front of you, you might be looking at it, you might be looking elsewhere, but you're essentially doing a photo shoot as your character. However, I also have a, another piece of advice, something that you might like to try, because I tried it for the first time this past Comic-Con in May, which is to take more photos that look like film stills 
from your camera and I actually used a film camera instead of my phone camera for this one. I basically wanted this next set of photos to look like I was either one in a movie and these were like stills from a movie or two I was like a real person I was a real character in the real world and someone just happened to be snapping pictures of me someone was just papping me on the streets basically <laughs> but I liked the way these turned out especially I used my film camera and my sister's film camera we had two different ones that day and as you can see mine especially they're not the most high quality things in the world but i kind of like the way they turned out especially with these black and white film rolls so i feel like these photos were pretty fun to take because i had no idea how they were going to turn out i would literally just be walking up and down the street standing looking here looking there um and a lot of them did not turn out well i tried to do some action shots of me doing some kicks. Um, I was not very good at that. I need to practice my kicks a little bit. <laughs> but the majority of them turned out pretty cool and this one is by far my favorite. I think we caught this one on my sister's camera which was more of a heavy duty one than, my, than mine was. But I love how the light has filtered through here. She was really creative in terms of, you know, telling me, hey, I think you should try standing there. And she went behind some of the bars and took this picture of me. We waited for the wind to come. The wind was really picking up at some point when we were taking pictures with my phone camera, but it stopped when we were taking a lot of my film camera ones but thankfully a little bit of it came through and i just love the atmosphere here it's giving me like she's waiting for her next mission or like she's waiting for her teammates to come back from god knows what they've been doing or like she's thinking of like the preemptive headache that john constantine is gonna give her when he shows up again inevitably but i just think it's pretty cool let me know in the comments what you usually use to take your cosplay photos are you a phone person? Are you a DSLR person, like a digital camera person? Or do you use film cameras as well? Or is there some other method that I am ignorant to, but I would love to learn if you do have these secrets that you'd like to share. All right, so onto the editing tools that I use to edit my cosplay photos. I will preface this by saying that I do use some paid for subscription apps and programs to edit my photos but all of these apps have like a free version attached to them as well so you can definitely still download and use the free version if you are not willing to pay for a subscription but the main one that i use is vsco on my phone and i edit the majority of my photos with this not just my cosplay photos so i will show you what i did with my photos here with zatanna I mostly wanted to capture that feeling of the Justice League dark comics be more moody and grungy in tone. So I chose to play on the cool tones here to make it a bit moodier. I increased the contrast a lot. I increased the sharpness. And I think this is very much the opposite of how I usually edit my photos and how I usually edit my Zatanna photos as well. I might pull up an example here for you to compare the different styles, but I usually like a very warm toned photo, very highly saturated, um, a lot of like yellows and reds and pinks, and I like to put a little grain filter because I think it just adds to the softness of the colors and although I like a good contrast just to make the colors pop, I don't like anything that's too harsh. Whereas for this photo shoot in particular, I wanted it to look very harsh, very gritty. So honestly, the main thing I just like to play around with is lighting and colors and sharpness and just refining how the photos are cropped. So if I'm posting on Instagram, I like to post a set with different variations in the way they're cropped just to make it more interesting to swipe through. So yeah, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Again, this is not the only app out there. I'm sure there are others depending on what type of phone you use and what you prefer, but this is just the one I've been using for probably a whole decade now. <laughs> so for the most part, my editing journey would usually end there. Like I said, I'm not usually very fussy in terms of what I want actually edited. It's just to get that 
atmosphere through and I wanted to take that a step further this time when I was doing my Zatanna photos and I wanted to make these posters that were more in the vein of old school vintage magician posters because a lot of her old comic book covers or a lot of her old art references this style of vintage magic posters. So what I did next is I opened Canva. It's a tool for graphic design mostly. Now I feel like I should also give credit to where I drew inspiration for the aesthetic of the photos that I started editing, which is from Hellbore magazine. I talked about this a little bit in my previous video on indie comics and zines. I really like the style that Hellbore uses. I like the typesetting that they have. It's very like old medieval-y. I like the kind of cut and paste vibes. I love the duochrome colors that really show in their photos and the edits that they do with various artworks pulled in. And I basically just wanted to do something in that style for Zatanna. So what I did was I took my photos from my phone use the background remover on Canva. I chose a background from their stock photo library. And if you're not subscribed, you can find other websites with free stock photos as well. I'll give you an example for this one. I used a photo of some guy at a concert. I think it's just some singer. I don't know who he is. I zoomed it all the way in so you could not see the rest of the band and the stage and, you know, the people in front in the concert. And I plonked my photo of me as a Tana on top of it, played around with the lighting a little bit to make sure that everything was cohesive. And once I was happy with how it looked, I put it back in my phone, put it on VSCO, put another filter on it, just to make sure that the colors were all kind of united in that sense because you know when you're cutting and pasting things from different um yeah different photos different sources you're gonna get like differences in quality differences in lighting depending on where the photo is taken and i think like slapping a preset filter on it at the very end is going to help just unify your image so that's just a very quick tour very quick summary of how i edited my photos with canva i'll show you a couple of the other photos that i edited here again i'm still in the same cosplay for zatanna but i actually did want to return her back to her stage magician roots for this particular set of photos. I wanted to bring back her softer side. I wanted to bring that sparkle of magic in her. I added lots of like sparkly effects. You can see how you can really change the atmosphere of an image or you can even repurpose an image to suit various styles of photos and of cosplay art in general. I feel like the art of taking cosplay photos shouldn't just begin and end with the photos you take. You can do so many things with it. You can make so many edits with it. And my personal goal at the moment is to have enough photos to make a little zine of it. Not just my photos of Zatanna, but I want to make a cosplay zine for every character that I've ever cosplayed. I definitely like to finish that project sometime this year and you guys on this channel will definitely be the first to hear about it once it has been launched. And as for today's video, that's pretty much all I had to share for today. I hope some of that was helpful to you. I hope it gave you some inspiration as to, you know, what you can actually do with your cosplay photos. And if you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe and recommend this channel to some other fellow cosplayers, perhaps. That would really mean a lot to me and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!